All right. I'm just going to go through this quickly because I am done editing this video already. <sighs> so, um, this is a list of the full, all of the personal skills in Wild Arms 2. Let's go ahead and eliminate all of the ones that are status effect based because that's just going to be a separate video on its own. And for that matter, let's just go ahead and eliminate all the ones that I haven't talked about or can't talk about on this video. Um, the magic ones will be on a different video. The guard ones I can't figure out. Um, FP up, I didn't do this video. And counterattack is probably the same as critical. Anyway, eliminating some of those, let's start talking about some of the skills. First off, cut FP use. It does exactly what it says on the tin. Every force point ability that you have, that's not your, like... Things that cost force points. These are the things that require force points. Require one fewer force point. So, for an example, a healing spell would cost one less. Or, require one less. Next up, up HP. Up HP is really simple. You add 10% of your amount of hit points that you would gain on a level up to your level up. So, for instance, if you were to gain 90 hit points on a given level up, you would gain an additional 9 hit points. Unfortunately, as I determined while recording this video, and specifically while I edited this video, hit point increases are non-linear, so it's very difficult for me to figure it out without having to go back and scrub through every single one of my videos, and I just don't feel like doing that. Next up, up parameter. Up parameter increases all of your force parameters by a value equal to 10% of your attack parameter. So what that means is that Cannon, for an example, if she had 100 ATP, would have her attack, defense, so ATP, DFP, magic attack, magic defense, and res, or response, increased by 10. So this is the reason why we determined a while, or why we saw a while back turn order changing in the middle of combat, even though the characters had the same number of force levels, it's because it's not increasing it by their res, it's increasing it by their attack value. Which means mages kind of get screwed over by a parameter, which I did not know until now. Critical. So criticals are very heavily dependent on luck, as I found out. In this video, I figured out that at normal luck level, one rank of critical increases your chance of critting by about 10% which given that your chance of critically hitting before having a critical is 0%, that means that you have a 10% chance of criticaling at normal luck. At best luck, that chance roughly doubles. So it becomes roughly 20%. Again, my numbers are a limited test value. There's a large margin of error, but this video took me several hours to record and even longer to edit. So um, when it comes to best luck and it goes up as high with best luck and also having three ranks of critical to be a 50% critical chance. And keep in mind, you can only critical on a basic attack. Res, or response up, increases your response rate when you approach death, also known as being in critical health. It appears as though it increases it with all three ranks by somewhere between 20 to 25%. This is totally not worth it for reference. I have absolutely no idea why they even bothered with this in the game. Because there's never really a point where this makes any sense. Up P attack, on the other hand, is very exciting. Up physical attack seems to increase the amount of damage that any physical attack does, regardless of whether that's a melee hit, or using a GAD ability from cannon, or using a cannon ability from either Ashley or Brad. It ups all of them by a value based off of your strength value. Sorry, I had to pause there for a moment. Um, so what up the attack does is each one of those levels increases the amount of... Um, increases the multiplier on your strength stat. So in other words, let's say that you have 100 strength and your weapon gives you plus 20 ATP. Normally, that would mean that it is... 2 times 120, or your ATP, or, or your weapon value plus your strength, plus or minus 10%. What this does is it would be 2 times your strength plus your strength, again, plus your weapon value. So each rank of those up P attacks increases the 
effect that your actual strength stat has, which means that this is a great ability for any of your physical attackers. I suspect that up M attack is probably very similar. Finally, we have all of the hit point ones. The re restoration of hit point ones, so restore F HP restores hit points every time that you increase your force level. This is primarily useful inside of boss battles. Convert HP increases your amount, er, sorry, uh, restore HP is for healing, not actually increasing maximum hit points. Uh, convert HP converts your force points to hit points at the end of the battle. Specifically, each rank of it increases your, or restores an amount of hit points equal to 10 times your remaining force value above one. So if you have 36 force points remaining, you heal 350 hit points. Finally, Restore HP 2 re heals you on level up. First rank heals you 50% on level up. Second rank heals you 100% on level up. Oh yeah, um, Restore HP... Oh, what was that? Yeah, I've already forgotten. Sorry about that. Um, it doesn't heal that much hit points, uh, that many hit points on a force level up to the point where converting HP is almost always better than restoring HP, unless if you only want to use it during boss battles. So if you're just like, a normal random encounter would probably heal most, if not all of your hit points left by using convert HP, whereas restore HP, random encounters are probably not doing much of anything. All right, that's it. You don't have to watch the rest of this video if that's all the details that you're trying to get. I am tired. I have been editing this now for five hours and I recorded for three, so I'm done. If you want to watch the rest of the video, please be my guest. There's at least some editing. Anyway, bye. Good kitten, Jeanette, and welcome back to a Let's Analyze Wild Arms. Um, this is a slightly different location than my uh, the last Let's Play left off at, and that's just because I went back and grabbed Maryville without increasing any personal skills. So, this is Maryville without any personal skills. She's at 1,060 hit points. And what we're going to be doing today is analyzing how personal skills actually work. Specifically the ones that, well, I can actually analyze. The first and much obvious one that I can do is analyzing hit points. So both Ashley and Maryville, you'll notice that Maryville still has a far fewer hit points than Ashley. Um, both of them have relatively low amounts of hit points, but Ashley's had several, pardon me, several levels of um, HP up. So what I want to do is figure out, one, exactly how many hit points HP up actually gives. Two, if it's the same between character to character. So let's start. First off, we need to get a baseline, which is to say we need to grind a little bit. Um, I just realized I just dropped the volume a little too much. There we go. So we need to grind a little bit. I just love the way Marifold runs. It's hilarious. And this area is probably perfectly cromulent to grind in. I was surprised, though. That's unfortunate. Ooh, it's the mages. I had problems with them before. And specifically, cannon's going to have problems. Let's get rid of one of the gap pet tiles that way. Let's saber to get rid of a second. And Tim, you... Yeah, you can Valkyrie. that work? Probably. It was 1060 hit points. I'm gonna grind. I have to grind quite a bit more than that, don't I? Um, yeah, I need a lot more XP than that. Okay. <sighs> Where should I grind? I have to be careful when it comes to um, 
Which one? What I'm doing. This is one of the right points, right? Werewolf's then. Okay, no, that's something else. Okay. I'll be coming back to there later. This is not going to have any plot or anything. In fact, the next couple of episodes are probably not going to have plot. Um, I guess I can just run around this area. Let's see. First off. Increase encounters. Got one pair of elven boots. Let's go ahead and wear the second pair of elven boots. By the way, there are three pairs of elven boots in the game to make sure that you always have a surprise round. That is a thing that you can do. Oops. Did not mean to actually get into our Dargan. How it goes? Oh, by the way, I'm using a different microphone compared to normal. Um, that's because this microphone is broken. Uh, I broke it. It's entirely my fault. Bockles. Bockles. What the heck are bockles? Uh, those are bockles. Okay. They give 500 XP. It's actually not too bad. They actually have something I need, but that's not for this video. So we're just going to grind a little bit. I'm going to pause, basically, until we actually get enough XP to level up Maryville. So, be right back. All right, Maryville just leveled up once, so this is our baseline. Honestly, I probably should have saved between the previous fights so I don't have to do all of these fights again, but that's okay. So now we've seen that Maryville has gained 120 hit points. Okay. So now what we want to do is load the game. Do, 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 do. Fast forward, please. I loaded there. I put it at the end. That way I can overwrite it later for reference. And also it's going to overwrite itself. Better not have a copyright flag. Um, it's probably going to end up overwriting itself when I reload from save state. So now we are going to personal skill, which is upstairs if I remember right. Isn't it upstairs and over on the side? All right, personal skill, up HP once. So, Maryville gained 120 hit points before. Time to find out how many hit points she gains now. And rinse, repeat. Be right back. And Maryville's leveled up. And we have gained 1,100... We have gained 132 hit points. So, that's... Darn it, I've already forgotten how much the previous one was. Ah... Uh... I'm going to have to watch the video for that. Wasn't it like 1020 or something like that? So I'm only gaining an extra 12 hit points a level. Maybe it's 10%. Not 1020, 120. That would make sense if it was 10%. That also means that HP up matters more for the higher HP characters. Might explain why Brad's a freaking monster amount of hit points. All right, so 132. Time to load again. Oh, the problems of analysis. Skip through the opening and... So if my theory's right, this should give it an extra 24 hit points. So that would be 144 hit points. I mean, plus 10% hit points is not anything to, you know, cry about. Time to go back, and I might as well pause. This is actually the best area to level up that I've found so far. That's not plot, so be back. Okay, I just wanted to point out the fact that I found a balloon. Just a normal balloon randomly in the area around um, Maryville's castle, the Crimson Castle. And it was a normal exclamation point not a green one i am so confused right now confused enough where i'm actually going to do an analysis 
make sure this is the same balloon. I, I just so confused. You know what? You can dig out. It's fine. Yep. Okay. That was a thing. Anyway, continuing. And it looks like my theory is confirmed. With two HP increasing abilities, it seems as though Maravil's getting plus 20% hit points per level. And I'm going to assume the last one's 30%, but I can't trust it. Mostly because I'm just really curious to make sure it's linear. Because I don't necessarily know it's linear. Hunch and assumption that it is, but, you know, always good to check. So, how's it going, by the way? Mm, today is... Yeah, I don't know. December something? Um, December 5th. For reference. Um, because it took me a while to actually get the microphone in. And, well... Couldn't record videos before then. And then after I got the microphone in, I've been... Freaking busy. Which sucks. I don't like being that busy. I mean, admittedly, it was mostly with fun things, but... Uh... Alright. Back to the grind. And the final one confirms with Marivo gaining 156 hit points, which is exactly 36 hit points more than she would normally, which means that she... that each one of those levels of, um... Let's get the actual name here. Give me a moment. So, for each level of up HP, you get an additional 10% of your maximum hit points. Which means that we can even figure out how many hit points each of these characters are missing. Now, one of the things I'm going to try to do is actually get my video editing working properly for this particular recording. So, if you see editor me commenting right about now, that means that I've succeeded at actually editing without the stupid glitches where it just drops frames for no reason. Um, and if I haven't, well, you're seeing no editing here now. So, editor me, please put in how many hit points each of the characters should be missing based off of how they leveled. Assuming that it was theoretically possible for any of these characters to level up with, um, oops, hit the wrong button. Assuming it was possible for each of these characters to start at level three with up HP and go from there. So how many hit points are my party missing? Go. By the way, if editor me can't do this, it's in the description. <laughs> That gives me an idea as to how many hit points each of my characters could theoretically have at maximum. And that is really useful to know. Because it means Maryville won't get one-shotted by things. Anyway, next thing I want to test up. So, cut FP use is really obvious. It does exactly what it says on the tin. Every one of your abilities, not your force abilities, your, like, spells, arms, and so on, costs one force point less for each level of this. That's pretty decent at certain points and generally not useful for most of the game. The reason why it's not useful for most of the game is that you start with an amount of force points equal to your level. So unless if you're trying to cast something that's very low on force point cost, this is pretty much useless. You'll by the time it's like, "All oh, right, I've contributed six for uh, six personal skills points into this. I've decreased the level by 3. You've leveled up enough times where that no longer matters." Restore HP. This is a decent ability, and I am going to test it out. So, we are increasing this by one. Uh, actually, wait. Now we're going to increase this. So, I just loaded the state from the end of the last one that we did. Which, speaking of, before I forget, I am saving. Holy crap, because I did not actually save this as I found out the hard way. Okay. Just 
Just want to make sure I have the save because otherwise bad things are going to happen. Um, so right now, Marvel needs to level up, but that won't take me that long. But what I'm going to do, there we go, saved, is give Marvel Restore HP. What this means is that when her force skill increases, she's going to heal a little bit. And we'll find out how much a little bit is by fighting. So let's go back over to an area, probably the same area I've been doing all of this grinding at, because that's probably... Actually, no, the Big Island's probably better for leveling now that I think about it. So we're going to go over here to grind. Just dawned on me that that means that I overwrote the previous save. So I'm going to have a bit of backtracking to do when it comes to the next video, but that's okay. Shamblers. Do you actually give more XP? Shamblers give only 230 XP? Really? Ugh. This isn't even worth trying. I might as well just go back to where I was. It's going to take me too long to level up. So it takes Marvel, what, 5,000 XP to level up right now? I could go to the dangerous area now that I think about it, but... Yeah, I wonder if this area is actually going to be better on leveling. Oh, I can't actually land there. I can land here. Is this any better on leveling? Grendels. I'm pretty sure that this is better on leveling. Uh, no, not actually. That's only a thousand XP. Admittedly, this might actually be faster now that I think about it. And they're weak against air. Okay. I mean, I'm still going to be killing these really fast. Yep. Okay. Let's level this for a bit. I will be back. Just wanted to state something that just happened to me for the first time. This was a back attack. So I now have the wrong party with me. Cool. Cool. And we're back. Marifel's leveled up, and I wanted to make sure that she was below 50% of her maximum hit points, which this particular enemy just so happens to have the ability to poison. Uh, so Marifel is below 50% of her hit points because I suspect the force level up is going to increase her hit points by 50%, or current hit points by 50%. So we'll find out. Uh, the other reason why I have Tim out is that Tim has the ability to just restore everybody's force points. Really convenient. So, um... Yeah, let's switch this over. Wrong one. Switch this over to. Um, actually, I bet Ashley has it equipped. Yep. We're switching over to Grudyev. That way we can have cannon defend for everybody. So people won't be attacked by things. Uh, Marivel's going to defend. And Tim is going to FP shift. Let's see how this works. Sixty. It's only ten percent, or five percent of maximum hit points. I'm not sure which that is. Hmm. Let's find out. Wherever it looks so cool. Sixty. It's 5% of maximum hit points. Rounded down. Ha! Huh. That makes it even less worth it than I thought. Let's go ahead and get the second tier of this. 
the city over here. Oh, damn thing. Okay. So if that is the case, then... Is this 20%? Because if so, then I'm only healing 30% of my maximum hit. Or sorry, would this be 10%? Because this is nowhere near worth it if that's the case. But that's why I'm analyzing. This is Let's Analyze Personal Skills, and it's not exactly an exciting video, I know. Uh, is that the island I was? No, this is the island I was on. The other one looks like it actually has things on it, and I don't want to deal with things. All right. We don't need to fast forward anymore because I thought it was 50%. That was what my memory was telling me. No idea why. Surprise them. Sweet. All right. So I can do both. So mini carrot, Marivel, defend, FP shift. So this should give 120 hit points then, or a little over actually. 120. One twenty. Huh. That has some interesting implications for how rounding works. Okay. New plan. Let's make sure it's actually a percentage and not just a flat amount. And the easiest way to do that is to test with Brad. I can only do one of these, but that's fine, because now Marivel and Brad should be gaining the same amount of hit points if it's a flat percentage. They'd be gaining the same amount of hit points if it was a flat percentage, and Brad should be maxing out, or not flat percentage. If it was a flat amount, they should be gaining the same amount of hit points. If it's a percentage, Brad should be maxing out on hit points on a battle. All we need to do is get into a battle. It doesn't matter what the type of battle is at this point. Looks they're both injured. This works. I was surprised. I don't know. This might actually change things. This might change things a lot, actually. Nope, didn't change anything. Sweet. Why is critical not working on them anymore? Huh, I wonder. All right. Defend, defend, FP shift. It is percentage based. Uh, which means I need to get Brad more injured. All right. Time for injuries. Be back. No need to record this part. This is why I need to remember to do instant death. Also, there's no Kini here. That's unfortunate. Hmm. Do I have anything? Hello? Uh, do I have anything that'll work as a kitty within reach? No, I don't. Oh, well, yes, I do. Fair. Kitty may look familiar, depending on your web card or comic artist abilities. Anyway, this would have worked fine if I had actually remembered to equip an instant, an instant death onto one of the characters. Uh, be back. All right, back. I apologize for the flashing that's going to be happening because I got Brad poisoned. And that helps with this. So. Oh, yeah, Tim's also poisoned. Meh. Power charge. Defend. FP shift. This will be able to tell us actually how many hit points Brad gains. 294. Yeah, that's 
ish. So, um, five eight eight seven times point zero five is actually two ninety four point three five. What I think is happening is that it's taking five percent and round down, regardless. And the reason why I'm pretty sure it's round down is because of how many hit points Marifols are getting. Then, if you have two levels of restore HP, then it's taking that rounded down number and doubling it. Which is the reason why Marivol gained 120 hit points from two uses, or two levels of restore HP. Sorry, something in my eye. Whereas if it was actually 10%, she'd have, she should have received 121 hit points. There's no variation on this. It's just a flat percentage of your total HP, which means that I'm just going to keep the poison because it's actually really convenient for me for testing. I'll just cure Tim because I don't want Tim to be that heavily injured. Which means that this ability here, which costs you four per level, is totally not worth it. I mean, seriously, you're only getting 5% for four points. You're getting more hit points from this than you will probably recover from this at the same time. I don't understand. It's not worth it. All right, next one to test is up parameter. This is going to be difficult for me to test. Uh, actually, I need to reload. Well, before I reload, let's make sure that there aren't any more hit point ones I want to do. So there is restore HP too, which is restoring your hit points when you go up on levels. Unfortunately, that's somewhat difficult to, for me to test, isn't it? Well, I guess, no, I can test it with Marivel. Yeah, because Bread needs 20,000 hit XP to level up. That's going to take forever. Marivel only needs 5250, so... Let's go ahead and test that one before I reload the game. This one might be the one that's 50%. Let's find out. Alright, we've got one level of it. Uh, I should just cure that stupid... Status effect before the blinking drives me up the wall. All right, and then let's get back to a place where I can level quickly, and I will pause this. Be back. And back. This should get Marivol her level up. Um, as you can see, she has 193 out of 1216 hit points. Let's find out how well this works. They'll die before they attack Marivol. I already know that. Marivol's leveled up to level 19. And this time, yes, I did write the number of hit points down. And she now has 879 out of 1372. All right, so 879. That means that she gains 786 hit points. Is that right? I'm tired. I'm just going to use a calculator. 686. Okay. So 686 um, is exactly half of her current hit points. Okay. So that means that the restore HP on level up will restore 50% of your maximum hit points. The second tier is going to restore 100% then. There's no way it would be anything else. Oops. Run away! Anyway, I was going to check to see other things that I could potentially try out. You have force point. Or you have personal skill stuff, right? Pretty sure Holst does. No, it does not. Right, this is the one that... Do oh, there it is. Okay. Alright. What else do we have? So, advanced guard. That... So, advanced guard probability. I believe that is the probability of you defending on a round if you're surprised or something like that. I'm going to test that, but not necessarily right now. This does what it says on the tin, but I'm still going to use it. 
Oh crap, I just realized that I have to use it without restore HP. So we're going to do that on Brad. So 37.79. Let's get into a battle after one tick. Doesn't matter what the battle is. There we go. Okay, so they're still alive. Thirty-seven seventy-nine. That increases their attack. Cool. Hmm, that's actually a kind of neat ability, if I do say so myself. I mean, they're definitely dead now. So, 3779. It is now 3899. That's 120 hit points. Where the hell did 120 come from? It was 3779 before, right? I'm going to write this down really fast. 38.99. Reload. 37.79. I gained 120 hit points from one of those. What in the world? Oh. Fine, I'll just finish this battle. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Everything's fine. Haven't been sleeping well lately. Sorry about that. Anyway, just finishing the battle so I have things. Safe state there. Okay. 3779. She definitely had. What the hell? This is very confuzzling. Okay. Let's just teleport. I am so confused right now. Okay. So let's have a convert HP there. And a convert HP there. So I've got two characters that I'll be converting HP at the end of battle. One of them's at 879 hit points, the other one's at 3779. Okay. Let's get into a battle against a balloon, where I know I'm not going to level up. Yeah, that actually might make people seasick. I surprised them. Also, let's make sure that none of them are in the front. Okay, the reason why I want to do that is that now I know for a fact Brad should be healing based off of 37 force points remaining. Maryville should be healing based off of 19 force points remaining. Really doesn't matter. Regular attacks are fine. These are balloons. Oh, and I got another balloon encounter while I've been grinding. I think it's just accidentally in that list of things. Okay. Neither of them gained any hit points. They actually have to be in the front. Interesting. Okay. I can make this work. Because I can have Loka kill everything. Because Loka is that awesome against level 1 enemies, that's for sure. And that will ensure that they don't gain any force points. So what I think may have happened is that Brad actually gained force points from using Lawnmower, which I didn't think those gave force points, but that's fine. You're defending. You are going to Mystic something. It doesn't really matter what. Let's not do Darkness. Let's do Fire. And you are defending. Bonk, bonk, bonk. They're dead. And hit points. 
Marinville has 1069. That's 180 hit points. And Brad has 4149. What the heck? Okay, it's spreadsheet time. This is not making sense to me. So what this should be doing... Uh, uh, mouse cursor, where are you? Mouse cursor? There's mouse cursor. There's mouse cursor. Sorry, it's really hard to find the mouse cursor when they're, the simulator's running. Okay. So, we have column for bread, column for Marivel. Their FP is 37 and 19, respectively. Old HP is 37.79 and 8.79, respectively. New HP is 41.49 and 10.69. Aha. Nope. I was just bad at math. It's 10 times your force points. That actually makes it better than the recovery. So, in conclusion... Of the, re uh, of the abilities that allow you to restore hit points, we've got a few of them. We have Restore HP. This one is only going to give you 5% of your maximum hit points each time your force level increases. Which, for a boss battle, can be minorly useful, but not very. I mean, seriously, a regen effect would probably do more than that. It's And we don't have a way of getting regen that I know of. Maryville might actually have one. But it's not useful, and it costs four force points per tier. At best, you can get 15... Excuse me, restore 15% of your maximum hit points every time that you for FP up. Now, having said that, this is actually a requirement of some boss strategies. Uh, that is, the bosses that you have so few hit points against that you just need to survive insert attack here, and then you'll heal a little bit as a result, and that healing a little bit is enough for you to survive a different attack. But in general, this is useless. Why in the world would somebody take that? Then you have Restore HP. This is even more useless. Sure, it restores 50 to 100% of your hit points on leveling up, but that doesn't happen that often. What you can do instead is what I've been doing, if you haven't been noticing when I've been playing with Tim in the party, and this is a Tim-specific strategy. If I'm fighting a normal encounter, I frequently have Tim restore hit points if I'm down by a significant amount. That will heal everybody in the party's hit points, and we're fine. This ability could be useful if you're trying for a no-Tim run, or even better, no-Tim or Lilka run, but not the greatest. This, on the other hand, if this truly is converting 50% or converting 10 times your force level at the end of battle every battle, and you are not spending your force level every battle, which for random encounters you shouldn't be, this will heal you almost as fast as me doing the Tim strategy. Only I don't have to have Tim, and I don't have to use Tim's action to do that. This could be extremely good. I mean, if that's... Assuming that doing this three times, which I can do it twice to verify. Let's do that really fast. All right. So this should restore 720 hit points from Brad. Ooh, 
40, uh, 54, 19. Yep, 740 hit points. Okay. So, yeah. Just two levels of that, which, keep in mind, two levels cost six. Heal more than what's possible. Well, not technically what's possible. Three levels would be healing more than what's possible from two levels of restore HP. Is that actually what it was called? You know, having a good memory would really help with these Let's Analyze videos. No, I was right. So, yeah. Restore HP isn't healing all that much. Admittedly, it is healing during battle, which means it's actually useful against boss battles. And it's potentially healing frequently during battle. But the amount that you heal is so low. Especially, especially for characters without a ma large maximum amount of hit points. Because, again, I'm choosing Brad in this example, where Brad would actually be healing... Uh, let's see, that would be... 250-some-odd hit points each time. Whereas somebody like Maryville is healing, like, uh, 60. It's just... It's not worth it unless if you have a high hit point character. Now, is the might actually be worth it for Brad specifically, just because his maximum hit points are high enough where this is a consideration. As opposed to Maravil, where I, if I wanted to do something like that, I would absolutely be using Convert HP instead. Especially if you combine it with FP Up. Because that will dramatically increase the amount of force points somebody has when they're about to die. And then you finish the battle, and then they heal up all of those hit points. That's really nice. Okay. Let's... I think that's it for healing-based ones. Yeah, it is. So, let's actually reload. Um... I think I want to reload from... Oh, that's right. Stupid. Mm. I can't reload from that other save because it's gone now because save states and physical save locations don't work the way my brain wants them to. Anyway, I just cleared out all of their things. So, if I remember correctly, and I don't have a great way of testing this for reference, but if I remember correctly, what this actually does is that the first stage makes it where if you were to be affected by insert status effect here, you have a 33% chance of saying, nah. -uh. The second stage is 66% chance. The third stage makes you immune. But these are generally terrible to use because you're only preventing one status effect. Admittedly, it only costs you three personal skills, but in general, they're terrible. There's an exception, though, and that is... Here. However, notice there's only two stages of it. This only makes you 66 some odd percentage. Basically a 2 in 3 chance of preventing it. It does not make you actually immune. But it's instant death. I hate instant death. This is actually a useful ability to do. I'm not going to cover the rest of the status effect ones because I'm reasonably sure that's the way they work. Because I remember upping this to maximum on a character and never seeing sleep again. Now that could just mean like a 75% chance of resistance or anything like that. I don't have a great way of telling because the characters themselves don't have a 100% chance of being hit with a status effect. The only way I would really have a chance of telling is if I populated all of these and then went to one of those enemies that just hits you with a face full of status effects. Because that would tell me, okay, none of these worked, that means that I'm immune to probably all of them, just from the sheer number of rolls that the game is doing to see if you're getting hit by a status effect. So, I don't have a great way of testing it. Maybe if I encounter an enemy that will do that. Right now, I don't have... Actually, I do. I'm going to have to test that one after I level Maryville up. Because I need Maryville. I, Maryville is going to be the one that's going to have the most number of personal skill points once she and Ashley level up. And I have no way of testing this out until I hit 
all of these status effects. And then when I do, I will absolutely test this with Marivel. So I guess stay tuned for that at another point. Anyway, let's go with Res. So this is something that it's only when near death that makes it harder to, for me to test. I don't want to test the near death ones because the easiest way to test those is to kill a character. Let's go kill a character. Yeah, be right back. All right, and we're back again. Um, I have KO'd Marivel, so she's at one hit point. So, in theory, res up should increase her speed almost immediately. And what I'm going to try to do is figure out how much it actually increases. So, Marivel speed right now should be 87, not counting res up. And she's absolutely in critical health, so it will be increasing. What's the next highest speed? Ashley at 93. So let's put Ashley in the party and see if Marivel's speed's higher than Ashley's. Let's find out. <coughs> then I'm going to start in equipping speed up items onto Ashley. Let's see if this works. I surprised the pill bug. All right, in theory, I don't know which one's going to be faster, Maravel or Ashley. It's time to find out. Maravel's faster. Okay, that's what I would expect. Let's bump up some speed a bit. Ashley, you are going to equip the thing that increases your res the highest. That appears to be Noah Shoax. Or Shax. Speaking of, let's remove everybody else's. I mean, Gridiv's fine, but... Okay. So now, Ashley has a speed of 111. Let's see if it's higher or lower. I was surprised. This isn't going to help, is it? Although they should all do zero damage. Yeah. Alright. Ashley is first. So it's not increasing it by that much. Okay. That's good to know. So that means that res up in one tier. And this is actually going to be somewhat difficult for me to calculate exactly how much is increasing res from 87 up to something below 111. Next highest that I can do is 102. Or the next lowest, I should do, say. So it's increasing it by more than 17, but less than 24? That can't be right. Hundred and eleven. Twenty four. But normal is ninety three. Okay, so it's increasing it by more than six and less than twenty four. Got it. Sorry, brain needed to brain that. Right. Marivel's going first. Okay. So it's somewhere between 109 and 111. So 109. <sighs> Apologize for my brain being a little fried today. One oh two and ninety-three. Okay. 
So that means that it's increasing it by somewhere between... Okay, so it's increasing it by at least 15. How much you want to bet it's increasing it by exactly 16? Do I have any res apples? No, I only have a strength apple. That does not help me. Anybody else's speed that low? How about Brad? Nah, his speed's way too high. Okay. What if I increase Maryville's speed as well? Because I have a hunch it's increasing it by 20%. Just try and get into a battle game anytime now. Thank you. Maryville's going first. Okay. Okay. So, if Maryville's going first at this point, she has 95. If my theory's right, she's getting an extra... 18 or 19 res. If it was 18, that would be 112. Which would just barely be higher than what Ashley has. Who's my next lowest character? One oh four. My next lowest character is way too high up. That does not work. I'm gonna have to level up, but I have a hunch it's twenty. Oh, and I don't have to level up. All I have to do is go back to town and get a second dose of the res up. Right, that makes sense. Because if it is twenty percent or twenty-five percent. Then the second one will be 40 or 50%, and that should be easier for me to tell. My stomach is growling. I had a pizza incident yesterday. Um, the pizza incident in question, I should say, is basically I had ordered crappy pizza from Domino's. Um, I just wanted something fast, and all the rest of the pizza places in the city were at, like, two-plus-hour long wait, and no. So, called the pizza, got the pizza, it was the wrong pizza. Um, I, my normal pizza order from them, let's, okay, I'm at 104. If my theory's right, it should be 40 or 50 percent, that puts me at 140 to 155-ish. I'm still not fast enough. I need a third tier. Fine. Let's get the tier three version of this and start fiddling around with res. So anyway, um, layers of hell for pizza. Um... Um, my normal order for pizza is chicken, onions, and uh, deep dish pizza. I received chicken, onions in a regular pizza, except that the tomato sauce was barbecue sauce. So, hold on a moment. Alright, back again. Sorry, I just need to ask my roommate a question. Um... I need to actually math. So, in theory, this should be somewhere between 60 to 75% increase in speed. So, that should be roughly 61 to 
80 bonus. Which means Brad is actually a good comparison at this point. Hopefully. Which means I need Brad in the party instead of Ashley. At this point, if Merrillville is faster than Brad, that means that it has to be 25% or higher, technically. Nope, Brad's faster. Okay. So I think it's 20%. Because 25% of Merrillville's speed, I think, is enough. Uh, it might not be. Uh, annoying. It's not. She would still be four speed under. Okay. I can't tell whether it's 20 or 25%, but it increases your speed when you're approaching death by 20 to 25%. That is not worth it in my mind. Reason being is that you shouldn't be approaching death very often. Um, not great. And personally, the way I tend to play these RPGs, you don't want to have your turn order change on you without realizing it. That's bad. That's really bad. So, next thing I want to do is figure out how much parameters go up. I think we had an idea before. It was 10% of... 10% of your strength is added to your ATP. But what I don't know is how much of your... Oops. Uh, how much of your speed is added. I don't actually know the answer to this. So I'm going to find out. All right. We're, what we're going to do to test this is we're going to get into battles once more with Merrillville and Ashley, because Ashley is the closest in speed to Merrillville, and basically see how many force levels it takes for Merrillville to beat Ashley in speed. So once more, as a reminder, Merrillville's speed is 87. Ashley's speed is 93. So if it's 10%, oh, I'm not going to be able to tell the difference on strength versus res. This would be easier to do on Ashley, actually. Oh, well. let's just do preliminary testing first. I can always do more testing with Ashley in a moment. I surprised them. Sweet. All right. I need a different formation. All right. Save stating here. So this is going to be a simple test. Defend, defend, FP shift. Wait a second. Does Ashley already have this ability? Hold on a moment. If Ashley already has this ability, this is not a useful test. No. Okay, good. It's okay. So, sorry about that. I just, one of those, wait a second, did I do this backwards? FP shift. All right. Marivel, Ashley... I don't care. Ashley's going first still. Okay. So what does that mean? So res 87, res 93. So no matter what, this had to have done plus six or fewer increase to resistance. Or to response. Sorry. Ha. Huh. So we thought it was 10% before. I don't know what that means.
Okay. Now the difference is only two. FP shift. Maryville's going first now. Okay. So that means that the difference has to be somewhere between two and six. Okay. Let's head back to town, increase it once more, and see if we can do anything with that. Somewhere between two and six. That's less than 5%. Or no, that would be 5% or less. Increase it a second time. Let's get into another battle. Honestly, I want to surprise them, so let's... Equip as many elven boots as possible. We can actually get a third pair of elven boots, by the way. Okay. It's not going to work. Okay. I need to equip Grudyev on Ashley. This way. Defend. Defensor. FP shift. Now I can control how, many, how much FP Maryville's getting because Ashley's the one going to be attacked. And I don't care about his... I didn't save state. One moment. All right. This time I did save state. Uh, it's a slightly different battle, but it'll be fine. Uh, so we wanted Grudyev installed. Installed. Equipped. I'm doing great on brains, let me tell you. Uh, equipped onto Ashley. Defend. Defensor. FP shift. Ashley's going first. That means that two levels of the res up do not account for six. Okay, so that means that it has to be two or three response increase at this point. Okay, what does it mean if it's two or three for the stat that's being increased? Because it's not zero. We know this. So to summarize our test, because this is probably really confusing for anybody watching. Um, what we did was that we tested with this particular setup. Oh, no, we didn't. Damn it, me. What I wanted to do was test with this setup. But that's... Whoops. Because it's... Uh... Hopefully my editing's working, because otherwise you're seeing a whole bunch of garbage, aren't you? Okay. Okay. I know that increasing force increases response time. I know this. We have evidence and proof of it. Oh, 
how do I get this up more? By increasing force levels more. Alright, I need to increase force levels more. Which means I don't need any equipment. We're going back to Grudiv. Marivol, you're going to... Any carrot yourself. Ashley, Defensor, Tim, FP Shift. Okay. I've been recording for over an hour and a huge chunk of this has been paused. It's great. Great. Okay. So. Two force levels of stat up for a comparison on 87 versus 93. So, and I've also have two pips of the personal skill. Marivel's first. Okay. So what does that mean? So my force levels increased four times. Effectively. So I have, over those four times, at least a plus six to resistance. That means that if it is plus six to resistance, or I keep saying resistance, if it is plus six to response time, that means that each of these force level increases have to be increasing it by at least two and not three. It's increasing it by exactly two points. Exactly, precisely two points. Because we weren't sure as to whether it was two or three. No, it could still be three. Okay. So, what does that mean? By two points. One twenty-fifth of res? That doesn't make any sense. I don't know how to figure this one out. Yeah, I don't have a great way of figuring this out for response time. Because it only increases it by two. Maybe the stat's just going up by one total. I don't want to make any sense. It can't be by one. Hold on a moment. I'm going to figure this out via Excel. Okay, I figured it out, and this makes zero sense whatsoever. Holy crap. So, remember before when I had mentioned... Uh, on the previous Let's Analyze, I had figured out that increasing your force up ability was based off of your, like, the amount of damage that you do. So the increase to ADP, ATP was 10% of your strength at maximum number of force increase. It appears as though the force increasing abilities are all based on strength. And this is part of the reason why it took me so long to figure this out. So, for instance, Marivel with her... 87 resistance, or I keep saying resistance, response is after four levels up faster than Ashley with his 102 response. But at two levels up, she's faster than Ashley with no response, or no increase in response, so 93. So that meant that I am receiving about four and a half res per level right now. And the only way that makes any sense is if it's not based off of Maryville's actual response time. Because that shouldn't be getting me four and a half. That should be getting me 4.3. And as far as we've been able to tell for Wild Arms and Rounding, Rounding's not going to help us there. The only way that makes sense is if you're basing it off of her strength, which is 91. 5% of 91 is 4.5, roughly. 
So I think what is happening, let me just finish these off and show you all. Yeah, you'll notice that Maravel is faster right now. So what I think is happening, now admittedly I have a crap ton of variables that I'm dealing with, but what I think is happening is that for each tier of actually get here for each tier of up parameter i think it's increasing it by five percent per tier but five percent of your strength stat instead of the correct stat which admittedly would be easier to code but not by a significant amount so a parameter is actually more useful on characters with higher strength stats. That also finally, finally explains the weirdness we saw in one of the ad earlier adventures where Lilka and Cannon, who both have maximum up parameter, were starting to swap their turn order randomly. You know why that is? Because Lilka's strength is 181 and Cannon's strength is 180. Cannon, at the time, would have had lower strength because she would have been lower level. And Lilka was probably about the same strength she is now, which means that Lilka has been increasing her response time faster than Cannon has, even though Cannon has a much higher response time to begin with. So, I consider that a bug. I bet that was not the way this was intended, because the way it's phrased is just, it ups parameters when your force level goes up. It says nothing about strength, and it says nothing about what stats or anything like that. I think what's happening is that instead of the game going, okay, you're going to get an extra plus however much percentage to each of your stats, it is instead going, you're going to get a plus X percentage based off of strength to each of your stats. Which, coincidentally means that Brad, with his big boy muscles, is going to end up faster than the rest of the party if given enough time with force levels, and you should absolutely have that ability on the characters with high strength. Is it worth it for the other characters is a different question. So, looking at this, this is the only way to increase your attack listed. So for any physical fighter, this makes sense. If you need to increase your speed, this is the only way during combat, outside of being near death, that your speed is increased. Once more, it's the only way to do it, it's worth it. So it seems to be worth it for characters who can one, heal, or prevent status effects from happening. So that would be Tim and Loka. Or two, physical attackers. That would be Ashley and Brad. Canon, we've already gone through Canon with the previous Let's Analyze, where it's a little harder to figure out. Personally, I like Up Parameter, just because it's nice and convenient to go, I'm going to get better throughout combat, which is very useful in boss battles. Obviously, Up Parameter does jack squat on normal battles. Um, The only ones we have left are Critical Encounter. So let's go ahead and reload. Critical, I'm not going to bother checking. I'm going to make a wild assumption that it is a very similar rate as counterattack. Nah, yeah, it might actually be worth trying now that I think about it. Let's go ahead and load this game. one each to start. Let's fight some balloons. I surprised them. Not the most helpful thing in the world, but that's fine. Marvel and the rest don't matter. I'm just going to have them defend. All right. We've increased our critical chance. That is not a critical. 
That is not a critical. Do you see what I mean now by this might be really hard to judge? Uh, be back. All right, after a whole heck of a lot of fighting, um, I was checking out what the critical percentage chance is. And this is my results. So what this indicates is that for 40 battles at normal luck, with one rank of critical up, I had four critical hits. For 41 battles, I just finished the existing battle for reference for this, um, I had five. This doesn't really help at all, and it's part of the reason why I don't like trying to figure out percentage chances of anything in this game. It's because my luck, personal luck, is terrible. So I thought, well, if my luck's terrible, what about the luck of the character that I'm running on? And that had a wee bit more of an impact. So at best luck, one rank ended up triggering eight times out of the 41 battles that I had, or 41 attacks that I had. And best luck three ranks triggered a whopping 20 times. That means that one rank appears to be about 20%-ish. Because again, I'm only doing this 40 times-ish each because, holy crap, that was 160 fights I had to do. It took me 45 minutes. Um, so, yeah. That's definitely a substantial increase compared to everything else. So what I think might be going on is that it's 10, 20, 30 percent. Now that doesn't make any sense. I really don't know what the numbers actually are. Um, like when I math the percentages, Yeah, when I math the percentages, it does not add up properly. Um, let's see. Yeah. So when I get the percentages back, when it comes to normal luck, there looks to be practically no difference. And I'm pretty sure that's just because my sample size is really freaking low because I don't want to fight hundreds of times. And there's no real automated way of me doing this unless if I were to auto battle and record it and then watch the recording and no, I'm not going to do that. So I have a hunch that my, this here is abnormal. This should actually be lower and it should probably be more like a 5% chance because that would make this with my reported 12% chance, it's close enough 15% for the margin of error. So my guess is that each stage of critical up increases your chance to critically attack by 5%. However, your actual luck stat impacts this heavily. This is showing up more like 20%, and this is more like 50%. So what I think it is, is that it's 5% at normal luck, 15% at best luck. So these are both abnormally high. This is abnormally... Uh, this, yeah. These three are abnormally high results. This is an abnormally low result. They would be within margin of error if my theory is right. So I think that critical increases your percentage chance of hitting by, or percentage chance of criticaling by 5%. Keep in mind, in the game, there is 0% chance of actually criticaling normally. Just like the counterattack ability. The counterattack ability appears to be the same percentage chance as critical. I did not go through all of the effort of trying this out because I don't want to gouge out my eyes. But I think that my data is pointing in that direction and that's going to be good enough for me. So yeah, 5% chance on critical. Going back to who should actually take things. Let me go back a lot of places. Hold on, I ended up with an Excel window on top of everything else. Um, let's go back. I'm just going to load so I can clear everything out. All right. Everything feels so slow when I'm not fast-forwarding everything. Alright. So. Let's go back to what you should choose out of these. Cut FP usage. 
This is useful for certain characters at lower levels. Merivel is actually one of them. However, I think most of her abilities she can already use. Um, I'm going to go through on a character by character basis when I do the rest of the characters and also eventually do canon again, um, whether cut FP use is actually useful. I have a hunch the answer is no for most of the characters. Up HP, yes. There's no reason not to do this as fast as possible because it's the only way you're going to get the benefit and increasing your HP, even though it's only by a tiny amount, it's only by about 10% of what the character would get normally is totally worth it per one of those. That That's a huge amount of hit points by the end of the game. Um, that's the difference between having characters at... 4,000 HP and dying from a 4,500 HP attack, and characters at 5,200 HP and surviving. So, yes, up HP. The way I did it, which is get it as fast as possible, this makes perfect sense. Restore HP. No. The only time that restore HP makes a difference is during boss battles, and even then, it's only useful on characters that have a large amount of maximum hit points because the amount of HP increased is based off of your maximum hit points. So if you're doing it for a low level character or low level character or a low hit point character, it's practically useless. If you're doing it for a high hit point character, I can almost see the argument. Like for Brad, maybe maybe that might be the last thing I throw in. A parameter. It is the only way in combat to have your parameters increased if you care about those parameters. There are two parameters that you really need to care about, and the rest of them, they're kind of a uh, maybe. First off, if you are a melee attacker, you should absolutely take up parameter. This is a great way of boosting somebody's damage if you're just punching them in the face. Sweet. Second way, if you are a character that is a healer and you're lacking in speed... I don't think Tim falls under that because his healing ability goes first, usually. There's very, very, very few cases where it doesn't go first. Lilka is basically who I'm talking about, because I don't think Maribel has any convention healing. Um, Lilka needs this. Just, that's... In my mind, this should be Brad, Ashley, and Lilka. Maybe. Maybe canon. Depends on how you use canon. Got a lot of notifications all of a sudden. Um, critical. Anybody who uses physical attack should take critical. That's it. It's a nice and simple one. If you're using physical attacks on your mages, you should still use critical. In this party, I think what it boils down to is that Brad and Ashley, absolutely yes. Can it probably? I mean, really in my mind, if you're going with up parameter on cannon, you should also go with critical on cannon. Because they're both increasing base attack. Because critical hits don't happen on anything other than a melee attack. I didn't mention that, but yeah. Advanced guard. I still need to test that. I'm going to do that some other time because this video is an hour and 20 minutes long on my side. And I'm going to have to edit this down. Um, honestly, all this does is you start combat defending. I don't think that makes a difference. There's very little in the game that defending really helps against. This might be useful against bosses. Maybe. I'm going to do some testing on it later. Counterattack. So this is rough. You'll notice that I've never bothered showing counterattack and never bothered getting counterattack or anything like that. And that's because I tend to pickpocket things. Counterattack runs against that strategy because your enemy will all of a sudden die due to a counterattack. When we start grinding Marivel and getting her red skills, I do not want counterattack. That is the last thing that I want. Because counterattack means killing off the things that I'm trying to steal abilities from. Once you're done with that, though, again, it's a physical attacker situation. So basically, for physical attackers, after you've increased your HP, obviously, you should probably look at a parameter and then look at critical encounter. Critical, then counter, I should say. Counter should probably be one of the last things that you get. That way you have already finished doing any of the grinding of characters that you want to do. 
Uh, that's both Canon and Merrillville in this case. Um, also, now that I think about it, Tim as well. Yeah. So I guess it doesn't matter as much if you're in a party with just Brad Ashley Loka. Convert HP. If you are lacking in healing, that is to say that you are not playing with Tim or Loka in your party, or if you are running a low level run, or if you have a high level but you never actually took up HP, convert HP is actually a decent way of handling healing because that means that you're not having to heal during battle in order for random encounters to be useful. This is not an ability for boss battles. This is an ability for all the random encounters in a dungeon. Res up. No. Just no. There's no situation that I can come up with that this makes sense other than throwing it on Ashley on a low level run. And even then you notice that I didn't bother. Auto guard. No, you should not. And defending near death does nothing because you're going to die from the hit anyway, because they're probably hitting you hard enough where you're actually near death. If they're not hitting you hard enough near death, you're not getting to this point anyway. What difference does it make? So no, this is a useless ability. FP up. That can actually be useful for the hidden up hidden boss battles. I did not bother going through and analyzing this because it's not worth analyzing. It's just, hey, look, I get more force points the closer I am to death. This will cause certain situations to get very nice. Specifically, I am talking about Ashley. So all of these like near death abilities are actually useful on Ashley if you are fighting boss battles. The reason being is that Ashley's final attack in Mighty Morphin Power Ashley form drops him to one hit point, and that counts for these near-death things. So that's the reason why res up makes sense for Ashley, especially at a low-level run. FP up makes sense for Ashley. Auto guard can... it's not great, but I can almost see that as an explanation on Ashley. Nobody else, though. Down guard. Everyone, I hate instant death. It needs to be removed from every video game ever. I want to still analyze what the effects of the a P attack, P defense, M attack, M defense are. I don't have a way of checking defense. There's no way for me to reliably do that at this point without, basically without game editing. And you've noticed that I haven't done any game editing yet because I haven't quite figured out how. To be fair, I haven't spent that much time on it. Um, it's probably worth it for the a P attack to do that on the characters that are melee attacking. I know, this is a huge surprise. Up M attack. It obviously makes sense to do that on Lilka and Tim, and probably Merivel, because I'm pretty sure her abilities are all magic attack based. I don't know though, I haven't done the testing yet. Magic defense. This makes the most sense on Brad and Cannon. I don't know if it's needed. That's the one thing I need to test still is what does this actually do for us? Maybe I'm going to continue testing and just break this video up into two videos. So if this is video two, hi, how are you doing? <laughs> um, yep. Yeah. So up here, defend. The characters with the lowest defense in the game are Tim and Loka, right? I mean, my levels are wonky, so I'm aware that my defenses aren't quite the same as... They're not even, so I'm not comparing equal defenses. So yeah, um, Lilka and Tim are the lowest defense. Marifel's probably a decently high defense character. I don't know for sure because I don't have good equipment. I only have the base equipment at the moment. But I'm going to theorize and say that Marifel's probably in the middle on defense. Probably along the lines of Cannon, actually. Cannon's got 252 defense. Marivel has 163, and Marivel is half the level. Yeah. So I'm going to say that you have three tiers on defense. You have Brad and Ashley, you have Cannon and Marivel, and you have Lilka and Tim. It makes the most sense on Lilka and Tim. It makes the least sense on Brad and Ashley. They don't need more defense, physical defense. They're already tanks. They already take nothing from most things, assuming they're appropriately leveled. So... 
Now, whether you take a P attack versus a parameter, that's the thing I need to figure out. I know how much a parameter is giving you right now. I don't know how much a P attack is giving you. It could be that a P attack is only the equivalent of one parameter increase, and at that point, that's not useful. The defense ones are a different story because that will be on the first round of combat, and for a boss battle, that's very useful. Don't know yet. The status effects ones. I'm going to do that as a separate video. And I'm going to find out just what percentage they actually all do. My answer is almost certainly no, for reference. There's no way that blocking these status effects make any sense. The only one I can see is ability blocking on Lilka. Because Lilka has the ability to remove status effects. But if she has her ability blocked, known as silence in the previous games then she can't remove her own status effect. That's a really weak explanation for it. You have so many better things to spend your personal skills on. All right. I'm going to figure out the up stats. This probably won't take long, right? <sighs> video is already so long, and I've spent so many hours today on this video. This is all I'm doing today, isn't it? Oh, I need to get baseline first before I do anything else. Let's get some baseline damage. Wait, I have this written down. It's two times ATP plus or minus 10%. Right. I don't know, know why I bothered doing that. Okay, so looking at Maravill's attack... It's currently 212. Ashley's is 195. I'm actually going to do this on Ashley. And the reason being is that I can actually equip different weapons, whereas Maravil, I only have Hob and Knob. So I can't change her weapon ability right now. And she doesn't really have weapons to speak of. I'll get to that when I get to a Maravil video. Anyway, I'm just double checking. 195. Oh, I just realized how much higher Marivel's attack is compared to Ashley's right now. Only downside is that I only have enough for one of these. 195. It is still 195, I'm assuming? Yeah. Oh, um... Forgot to mention, um, I've mentioned this in a video before, but the up force ability, the one that just increases all of your stats, that gets reset if you get dispelled, just like any enchantments on yourself. It's effectively enchanting yourself constantly. All right, it's Ashley that needs to attack this time. Uh, I'm gonna be right back. Welcome back. Ooh, kitty's here now. And I'm vibing like this. So I'm doing one final test, which is interesting. So I gave the physical attack up to Cannon, and it looks like it's actually working on her abilities? I am so confused. So to give you an idea, what I'm trying to do, I all I did was walk outside really fast and go, okay, Cannon, go hit something with your weak ability, uh, left edge. Hit a balloon with left edge. And then I went back in and used physical attack up. And it is actually increasing her attack. Which makes this really fascinating for someone like Cannon. I'll explain in a moment. Just gonna hit all three of these to make sure that my theory's right. I think it is. And this makes this an endlessly fascinating ability. Because they really messed up the formula on it. So... Let me clue you into the formula. So the basic attack formula is, or I should probably have the character profile open. That would make sense. So I did most of my testing with Ashley for reference, but the basic attack formula is as follows. It is two times your ATP, which mind you, ATP is your strength plus your weapon, but it is two times your ATP plus or minus 10%. That's what the basic attack formula is. It doesn't matter which character you are. It doesn't matter anything else. Although I have not technically tested... Um, 
uh, Maravil yet, but I'm pretty certain it's the same. It's two times ATP plus or minus 10%. What physical attack up does for a basic attack is makes it three times ATP plus or minus 10% for one stage. The next stage would be four times ATP. You get the idea. It's in greatly increasing the amount of damage your basic attack does, which is great. But this, this is weird. So here, let's do a quick comparison. I'm going to do another combat really fast. Oh, you can't see Boo with that angle. Seriously? There we go. Now you can see Boo. All right. So, regular left edge. Nothing special about it. We're doing 664-ish damage. Call it 600 and something damage. Now, let me reload. Where, at this point... I do not have up P attack at all. It's not there. So in theory, this should be the same amount of damage if there was no up to P attack. There definitely is, though. Unless if I had a really weird earlier one. There we go. Left edge. And note, it does 550 damage. Okay, so it's doing about a hundred less damage. What's the big deal? The big deal... Is the fact that that doesn't make any sense with her stats. I think there might be two formulas involved. Where is my mouse? There we go. So what I was getting from Ashley before is that it is, oh, sorry, my apologies. It's, um, it's not the first stage does 3x damage. It's the first stage does 2.5x damage. Uh, two, yeah, 2.5x damage. So basically every stage of up P attack increases your ATP multiplier by 50%. I did this by running through a series of 10 tests with Ashley with two different sets of equipment. Um, which only modify ATP and not actually modifying strength, and it was totally the ATP version, not the strength version. So, okay, that's fine. But... 50% of can't... Yeah, no, actually, that does match. Never mind. So, what I think is happening is that for... For whatever attack that you are using you're adding 50% of whatever stat it's based on. So for Cannon, her regular attacks are based off of ATP. So you'd be adding plus 50% of your existing ATP per stage of P attack. However, her GAT abilities, on the other hand, are based off of pure strength. So in this case, it's increasing her strength stat an additional time. So it's instead of like three times strength stat, it's three and a half times strength stat. That means that up P attack is doing an extra plus 50% strength damage on every hit. Which means that that personal skill is freaking awesome on anyone that's using a physical attack. Which is going to be everyone except for Luka, Tim, and probably Maribel. So the three physical fighters of the group. I was thinking that this would only be useful for regular ordinary random attacks it's not and that means everything that means i should probably be throwing stats into it right now oh this video is going to be utter hell to edit um i don't know why i did that i'm going to ignore the magic ones for the time being because i'm going to have a separate video that's all about how magic attack works i'm not going to worry about that right now that's for another day and I don't have a great way of testing P defend because that means I have to rely on something attacking me for a consistent amount of damage, and that's not really a thing. Which means that this video is at its conclusion. I hope you've enjoyed this internet, and hopefully I will have edited it. Otherwise, I have no idea what I'm going to do, other than I apologize so much for the hour and 40 minute Let's Analyze. Bye.
please let me actually record a real video now. Saying bye to you, boo. Meow. Meow. <laughs>